So recently, the popular podcast Frenemies between Ethan Klein and Trisha Paytas ended abruptly when Trisha Paytas had a fight with Ethan and ended up quitting the show. She later apologized to both Ethan and his staff for the argument she caused on Frenemies. If you want more context to all of this, I recommend you watch my previous video. But regardless, Trisha took back her apology once she found out that Ethan potentially lied to her. She found this out when the Twitter user Def Noodles tweeted out a comment from one of Ethan's employees, Dan, and captioned it by saying, Who could have seen this coming? Dan from the H3 podcast discusses on the H3 Discord statements made by Trisha Paytas about the end of Frenemies. Dan says, Trisha seems to be under the impression Sam came up with the advice segment idea. Not the case. Def Noodles continues by saying, Dan also clarified that Ethan Klein decided to postpone things until everything calmed down, adding they were ready to shoot the vlog today. He then shows messages from Dan that say, I guess she inferred it was us saying we don't want to. Ethan decided decided to postpone slash cancel it until things calmed down. We were prepared to go shoot today if that was the plan. It's my job. Trisha Paytas quote tweets Def Noodles and says, He literally said the crew didn't want to shoot. She then shows DMs between her and Ethan. It starts out with Ethan saying, Regardless, tomorrow, I think let's take the time to cool off. The crew is kinda upset about how things played out. And I don't blame them, you trashed them kinda badly. They work really hard on the show. Trisha responds, dude, let's just end this right now. For real. Like, it's okay, for real. It's better if I'm not part of it. I don't vibe with them. I didn't ask them to be involved. They've all been nasty as hell to me. AB downplaying my shit. Dan calling me an idiot before I came on H3. Ethan responds, they have not been nasty to you, Trisha. That's ridiculous. Trisha responds, Ethan, I'm done. Trisha then quote tweets Def Noodles again and says, I wonder why I thought this, from Ethan. She then shows more text between her and Ethan. It starts out with Ethan saying, because I was there. Trisha responds, how do you know she was upset if she didn't say anything? Ethan responds, Ian was upset for her, not that it matters. Trisha responds, oh fuck off, to which Ethan replies, I was there and heard it myself. Trisha responds, seriously, they are dating, sensitive as fuck. Ethan responds, I was there, it was rude. Trisha responds, you talk talk over my shit. Ethan, you were rude, eh? Ethan responds, so what, dude? We have a show. I got distracted by something. Trisha then continues tweeting when she says, to me, Dan's comments were saying they were ready to work the next day, and Sam didn't even make the segment. Shows me that Ethan has been being manipulative and creating lies between me and them. I know I said I wouldn't keep posting private messages, but I'm not a liar. I have to prove what was said to me. I can't live in a false reality. That really will send me in a spiral, and I'm doing my best not to. Like, once again, I never had any issues with the crew. Once Ethan told me they wanted to cancel filming because they felt disrespected, I was really shocked and confused. At 6.41, he asked if I would still do the vlog. I wasn't gonna leave them hanging. Three hours later, the crew is upset and we cancel. She then shows more DMs. It starts out with Ethan saying, do you want to do the rage room tomorrow? Trisha responds, it's up to you. To which Ethan responds, we already paid like 5,000 for it that we can't get back. Trisha responds, I'm down to do it, of course. Ethan responds, okay, cool. I'm down too. Trisha responds, ready for the rage, lol. Ethan responds, exactly. I know it's at 12. I'll get the details one minute. Trisha responds, okay. And then she once again shows the DMs where Ethan says the crew is upset. Trisha continues by saying, all this to say it's deflecting. My issue is with Ethan, not the crew. But even last night, him tweeting the crew had to go private because all the hate from my video, nobody was private, is a gross manipulative tactic. I don't know why he lied to me and said Sam did the segment when she didn't. I don't know why he lied and said the crew didn't want to film. This is all making my head spin. She then shows more DMs and quotes them by saying, they just need a few days. The DMs start out with Ethan saying, it's our show. Trisha responds, but I'm not comfortable with them either. Ethan responds, you said some things that were hurtful to the crew today. That's all. Trisha responds, they've done the same thing to me. AB questioning my motives with David. I forgave him. He had no place. Ethan responds, they just need a few days. So that's about it for the conversation around the crew. But moving on, Trisha then starts to address another controversy in regards to one of her previous leaked DMs where she says to Ethan, oh my god, I was like so Jewy during the conception of Frenemies. Def Noodles tweets this out, and then Trisha quote tweets him by saying, it was my sense of humor at the time, and it was a repeated joke I made at the time. It wasn't malicious, but it's still gross. It was only this year on an episode did Ethan explain to me why it's offensive to stereotype Jewish people as cheap. Like, it never really registered. Like, the joke was in poor taste, but I always joked about Jewish stereotypes with Ethan, until he told me how offensive it was and I stopped. 
I'm sorry. I'm literally converting to Judaism right now. Like actually going through the classes, learning the religion, and converting. Also, my kids can grow up with Jewish culture and religion. Like, I am a lot of things. I have a lot of issues, but I am not racist or anti-Semitic. As soon as he told me there was an issue with what I was saying, I stopped. To say we didn't have an offensive banter is ridiculous. He called me crazy and fat all the time. The only person I would allow that with, because that was the banter. But damn, to really take that and paint me as an anti-Semitic, like, is extreme. It was gross and wrong, but not hostile. Anti-Semitism is hostility or discrimination against Jewish people. It was an obvious joke in the text. A poor one at that. It wasn't malicious. If I discriminated against Jewish people, that would mean I don't work with them, and I sure as hell wouldn't be marrying into it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. People don't want to hear this from me right now, but I am. I'm acknowledging everything that's being thrown my way. I'm not hiding from things or running away. I'm trying to address things head on to de-escalate. Being silent means being guilty in my book, and I will clarify if I need. Apologize till I'm blue in the face. I've always done that and will continue to. Kiki responds to Trisha by saying, you clearly don't recognize that perpetuating stereotypes is still anti-Semitism. Just because you didn't intend it to be discriminatory doesn't mean it isn't. Trisha quote tweets her and says, I do realize. I apologized on Frenemies when Ethan said it does upset him. I apologize now. It was a bad joke I made and I'm truly sorry. I can't take back what I said back then. Like, I acknowledge it. I'm not sure what else I can do. Daniel Perez tweets out, they were so quick to praise and love Trisha, but as soon as they mess up one time, they're so quick to tarnish and trash Trisha online. Trisha quote tweets him and says, that's why I don't play into any of it. I never felt comfortable with people hyping me up because it's all fleeting. People hype you up and tear you down. It's truly the nature of the internet, and I can't be mad at that. I've been making my videos early in the morning, and I need to stop. I'm emotional right now, but mentally I'm not unstable. People keep saying I'm blaming mental illness. I'm not, and I've never said that. I've been mentally stable for most of this year, with the exception of a manic high a few weeks ago. I've managed to just be content. And while people tried to diagnose me as having a manic low right now, I'm really not. I'm highly emotional, but I'm mentally at peace. Like, I can't control what has happened. I can't control what people think of me. I'm just trying to keep ahead of what I can control. I make these videos early when I'm at my most emotional. Do I regret the past 24 hours and how I acted and handled things? Yes, of course. But there's no way to go back in time. There's no undoing things. Dasani responds to Trisha by saying, You mentioned how much you go to therapy multiple times during the fight. Trisha quote tweets him and says, Yes, because of that is why I'm able to keep a steady mindset through this. Trying to control my overthinking. Going to therapy doesn't mean you're crazy. It means you are working on controlling that crazy. Not going would be even scarier. Dude, this shit for real feels like a breakup. It's so fucking miserable. I'm not sure what stage of grief I'm in. But change is something that is so fucking hard for me to deal with. Like, it really is. Departures are never easy. It's not fun. I'm literally not reading anything anywhere. Just venting. Ethan Klein then uploads a 44 minute video to address everything Trisha has said so far. And then Trisha goes on to make four separate videos responding to his video. Obviously, this is a lot of content. I'm not going to show you all of it. But to be fair to Ethan and platform his defense against Trisha, I will be showing the most important points he made. That is relevant to what we have read out so far. But if you want to see the full thing, the link will be in the description below. But the thing that we discussed, you know, that was kind of like a non-starter is she told me that she wanted a whole new crew for Frenemies because she didn't feel comfortable with them. Whole new crew. We need to we need to essentially fire everybody that's worked on the show from the beginning. Find a new space and change everything. Call me manipulative all you want, but there is so much. Just saying, essentially fire everybody. Never once did that come out of my mouth. Never once did I imply that. I don't even remember saying, like, I will go through every single text message saying we need a whole new crew. Like, I, like, it's so crazy. It's, this is so, it's, it's so much deflection because again, my issue was and is with Ethan and had nothing to do with the crew. It is just a lie. I've never once ever replaced the whole crew. Like, that's. They've busted their asses every week to put on the best show possible. And so it's, it is disrespectful and demeaning to them to be like, we need to get rid of all of them <laughs> and hire new people. The people who have worked their asses off. He's such off. a liar. I've never once said, let's fire the crew. Never once said that on my grave. Like I'm. This is where maybe I fucked up. Okay. Is that I was talking to the crew, like being transparent with them. I was like. Trisha wants to hire a new crew. Obviously, that wasn't something I was going to commit to, but I was just like, I don't know what to do about this because this seems like it's not going to go anywhere. When the crew found out she wanted to fire them all, they were... But do you see? Do you see? This is what I'm saying. This is the manipulative evilness. Like, this is manipulative as fuck. When they found out Trisha wanted to fire them all... 
first of all, they've always been down to go work and do the shoot as we schedule. They are good. That's not what he said. You know, they need to pull off. Hardworking employees that are down to get the job done they, no matter mm -mm. what. That's not what he said. I had done a temperature check. Like, how do you guys feel about going to do this? Because there was some, there was just people like, you know, the vibe was like, Trisha wants to fire you guys and hire new people to do friend meetings. I've never said and that. Also, do you want to go meet with her and shoot tomorrow? <laughs> and so obviously, they, they That's were like, so manipulative. Well, it's a little awkward, right? But of course, I'm willing to do it. That's not what he's asking so me. I made the executive decision as their boss, trying to foster a healthy work environment that let's just not do the shoot tomorrow, bearing everything that's happened. In the context of that conversation, I think Trisha understandably came to take the meaning like, oh, they're on strike. That wasn't the case. They were always down to shoot it. And I made the decision to not shoot immediately after taking a temp check and and after everything that that happened the uh advice segment that we were planning first of all i thought it was sam's idea it was just an idea she pulled from a document but she did the work preparing it i don't think it really matters whose idea it was the fact that trisha was just going to sit there and trash their work but i do want to say for the record that's not what happened sam was not upset that she didn't like the work if anyone was upset it's because she said that she wanted to fire everybody and get a new staff that made people uncomfortable. Like, okay, well, she doesn't even want to be around me. The crew did nothing wrong. I misunderstood the situation. I told Trisha that people were upset that she didn't like the segment, okay? I take the blame for that. The reason they were upset that I misunderstood is because she said she wanted to fire them all. They were always willing to do their job, period. They have done nothing wrong. She called my wife like the C word. She called me, you know, she said the most horrible thing. She said, I'm a terrible parent. Ela's a terrible parent. I feel like he knows this. Bringing something that was like the lowest of my like existence, like things that I said to him and to Hila, like was so low. Like I, I couldn't believe they forgave me. It felt nice that they did. They've never treated me different after that. But like to bring that back up, especially after all this, especially after you just did this whole spiel about me wanting to fire your employees, like as a fucking goddamn monster. And then bringing this up to like, to, to drive that point home to illustrate a bigger villain picture is so like it's just so hurtful like i own up to that stuff i owned up to it then i own up to it now i live with guilt of that every single day it doesn't feel good i've never felt the same that's when i started really considering taking medication and i, I just got on it recently but like because i was like oh there's something there's something not right there's really something not right wired in my head and like and it was up to me to get that treated and not like lash out on people the way i was doing like it really i really tried my best like Obviously, we have banter on the show, but like, I really don't feel I've been disrespectful. Like, the idea of shooting that segment down, like, that was the disrespectful thing. Like, yes, it was rude. I'm sorry about it, but like, damn, like, the whole crew, the, you, you're making up lies that I want them to be fired over that instance and taking this thing that everyone's pissed at me about and snowballing it and creating this monster thing and bringing this back up in my face. Like, then why forgive me in the first place? Like, don't forgive me. Like, just end it there. You know what I mean? To, 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 to bring this up and to, just paint this bigger picture. She also did this. Remember, guys, she also did this. It's like, let me just bring up all your past, all the shitty things you've done to me and Moses in our beginning of our relationship. When you guys shitted on us on your podcast, there's a whole timeline of it, of just being so nasty to me and Moses. And it was just like, and I'm trying to leave him out of this because it really has nothing to do with him. And I, and in Hila too, to me, it has nothing to do with Hila. Like, I really do feel like we're past, like bringing this up is just, it is a lot because it's, 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 to me, it's unfair. You can't forgive me and then also keep bringing this up when you want to throw it in my face. So those were the bits I thought were most important. But again, a lot more was discussed. So if you want to see Ethan's video and Trisha's response, I will leave the link to both of those in the description below. But moving on, Trisha also had some Twitter reactions to Ethan. She said, I'm only halfway through and Ethan lying about me saying fire the whole crew. I've officially lost all respect for him. Show those receipts. Show one time I said fire the whole crew. Hell, one time I said fire anyone. What the fuck is wrong with you? There's a lot of awful truths about me you can expose. But just lying to the crew telling them I wanted them all fired? You are a bold-faced liar. And I never would have expected Ethan to be a liar. I'm in shock right now. Like, I'm in shock. That's why the crew didn't want to work. You told them I wanted them fired? When have we ever had a conversation about them being fired? Where? Brienne responds to Trisha by saying, Well, if you want to hire a new crew, that crew is fired. So 1 plus 1 equals 2. Trisha responds to her by saying, Literally not how it works. To hire two new people, lol. There wasn't even a crew the first four months of Frenemies, lol. They were getting paid way before Frenemies, during and after. Nothing I did nor didn't do affected their pay. He's not spinning something. He straight up made a lie I wanted 
wanted the crew fired, and keeps reiterating that. Daniel Perez tweets out, Do you really believe Ethan taking 100% of highlights and 55% of frenemies? He goes home with zero dollars? Impossible. That would be the biggest, dumbest business move ever. Ela wouldn't have agreed with that. It's common sense. Trisha quote tweets him and says, The lies, the lies, the lies. Never in a million years did I peg him to be a liar. Like, I seriously trusted him with my life. No contracts, nothing. I really just trusted him. I'm so fucking confused. When Frenemies started, it was QUARANTINE! Nobody was working on Frenemies. Adding a Frenemies producing is not taking anyone's jobs away. I just met Zach this year. I maybe met AB twice last year, and Ian I believe the Streamies was his first episode of Frenemies this year. It was always me, Ethan, and Dan. It was never a whole crew. Ever. For months it was just three. He started bringing them in more and more. And I did feel like an outsider, but never complained. And definitely never asked to fire them? What? Even if I thought everyone should be fired. Why would I ever say that? Look up videos of people who have worked with me. I'm not that person. Hiring a cameraman or a producer takes no one's job away. I'm so confused. They just recently started being more involved with the vlogs. This is all new. H3 has expanded their employees by at least four since Frenemies started. It doesn't affect me at all. But if we are going to have new people hired to help with Frenemies, where 100% of highlights revenue is supposed to go to, I would love to have someone I vibe with. They are all friends. They've known each other for years. It would have been nice to have gotten to hire someone, which he agreed to that same night, and it was fine. There was no discussion of who has to go in order to make that happen. Libby responds by saying, See, that's on Ethan. He should be clearing this up before going to the crew and being like, Y'all can't work with us once we hire X other person. Trisha quote tweets her and says, This. Why would he not have us all in a room at the same time if there was any issue? I had no issue on my end with them. It's always been with Ethan. He's deflecting. Ashley responds by saying, Maybe it was just a misunderstanding, because I think Ethan thought you said you wanted a whole new crew. But if you just wanted to add more people, it sounded like he might have accommodated. But at that point, maybe there was already too much frustration going on. Jessica responds, From what I understood, she started with a producer. Ethan agreed. Then they pushed for a whole dedicated Frenemies crew. Trisha quote tweets her and says, This never happened. Trisha continues by saying, He has all the receipts he pulled up of our DMs. Where's the receipts that I asked for them to be fired? That's so fucking out of this world ridiculous. I have no idea why he would tell them that. Sarah responds, Trisha, You wanting a new crew from Frenemies is taking away from H3 production crew. That is firing them from that specific show. Not from H3, but from Frenemies. Come on, girl! You're in defense mode. Trisha quote tweets her and says, Hiring a producer and a cameraman are two things we didn't have. That's not taking anyone's job away. That are all paid salary before frenemies. Frenemies didn't change how they were paid. This is so dumb. If anything, they were probably working extra show for the same pay. I don't know. McKins responds, You were the one to talk about what they are getting paid when you were trying to take a cut from THEIR salary. Trisha quote tweets her and says, I wasn't. This is something that came out of nowhere. These were employees of H3 before Frenemies started. I have no say in what their salary is, and I never said cut it. What the fuck? Kinsley also responds to Trisha by saying, Damn. I guess Dan was never a producer? Ethan considers you as family. Maybe it's time to call it a night. Trisha responds, He wasn't as far as I'm concerned. Up until two nights ago, Ethan has always referred to him as tech, and I think he's amazing. Try responds to Trisha by saying, He's literally always been a producer. That's so embarrassing for you. Trisha quote tweets her and says, He's always referred to him as tech for me. This was last night, and him saying I was rude to two people I only said nice things to. Other than I didn't like a segment I had no idea who came up with. She then shows more DMs between her and Ethan. It starts out with Trisha saying, But if these two people are gonna get offended because I don't like a segment, then I'm just good, for real. Ethan responds, But Dan is gonna be there to manage tech. They were not mad you didn't like the segment. They were upset because you were rude to them. Trisha responds, I wasn't. I didn't even mention them. And to be fair, she is telling the truth. In the argument that resulted in the end of the podcast, Trisha never mentioned the crew, but rather the segment that the crew came up with, not knowing that it was the crew who came up with it. And if they're not mad about the segment, what else would they be mad about? Maybe there's a piece to this puzzle that Ethan has yet to explain. Who knows? Anyways, moving on, Trisha continues tweeting when she says, All the H3 employees come and I don't care. Come. Keep them coming. I literally said how hard Ian works. But like, we can't add some more people? Especially if we have the budget for that? And not the dumb 5%, but also 100% of high highlights. What's the big deal? Ethan saying he made zero dollars on frenemies is another bold-faced lie. He makes what I make, which is a lot. And then he also keeps all the frenemies highlights, which is like 5 million views per month since the beginning. Vic responds to Trisha by saying, Trish, he said he makes zero because all of his income that he gets from frenemies goes to the actual podcast and producing it. Trisha quote tweets him and says, it's all lies. 
the amount of money he makes is ridiculous. We sit on the same set from the beginning. They just recently invested in new cameras, and staff is on salary. They get paid before, during, and after Frenemies. It's salary that existed before Frenemies came. Half-Truth responds to Trisha by saying, isn't he also paying for the new production studio plus merch, plus money for the things y'all do in and out of studio for Frenemies? Trisha quote tweets him and says, The office space was bought for H3 and Teddy Fresh pre-COVID. Frenemies wasn't even a thought. Me and Moses weren't even dating. Moses was working on that building before we dated. He's manipulating so much. Surya responds to Trisha by saying, You have to keep in mind this is your family too. Honestly, I hate to see you go down this drama rabbit hole again. You were doing so good. Ethan is supposed to be your brother-in-law. Both of you should handle this privately. Miscommunication can happen, but try to fit it. Trisha quote tweets her and says, Ethan lied. So much. To the employees about stuff I never said, I will never forgive him. That's fucked up shit. I maybe mentioned hiring a frenemies producer once before Monday. That's it. Oopsie responds to Trisha by saying, Trisha, no offense, but you benefited from frenemies more than you think. You said it yourself you saw growth in TikTok, YouTube subscribers, only fans since you started the podcast with Ethan. It was a great deal. A little more than great. Trisha quote tweets him and says, I never denied this. Ethan, however, claims he made no money, which is crazy. He's made an insane amount of money. Like, insane amount and sponsors and the teddy fresh plugs he making so well he acting crazy about saying he makes no money katessa responds to trisha by saying he says whatever he profits he puts back into the show trisha trisha quote tweets her and says i assure you he does not he listed the initial set costs and new cameras and his employees were on salary long before for enemies i wish we put some of the 100 percent of highlights he keeps which he never even mentioned towards production costs that would be dope zayla responds to trisha by saying to be fair, it's his money. You did no work to earn the highlights. She responds to him by saying, Lol, literally every title the first four months was all my name. And all my drama. It's still 75% my name and clickbait for all those highlights. They make bank bank on it. Moving on to a slightly different conversation. Seth tweets at Trisha, Wanting to hire a new crew literally implies you want to get rid of the current one, Trisha. They are not your employees to get rid of. Trisha quote tweets her and says, I literally wanted one person for me there. They are all for Ethan. We have the budget to hire one person to help me execute my ideas too. How is this hard for anyone to understand? Nobody responds to Trisha by saying, does anyone think she knows what a spreadsheet is? I'd love for her to discuss the production costs listed out for her monthly and where she would like changes in the budget to be made. Trisha quote tweets him and says, another lie he told. He's never shared budgets or expenses with me. Have no idea why he said this. He sends me how much revenue videos make and that's it. It was an odd lie. In another Twitter thread about Trisha Paytas, Libby says, the discrepancy is not whether or not Ethan agreed to a producer. It's that Ethan thought that Trisha wanted the rest of the crew gone and expressed this to them without clarifying with her to learn that's actually never what she was asking for. Trisha quote tweets her and says, exactly. Why is he going between all of us? When I see them? He is manipulating so much and I'm not sure why. Like why tell them I wanted them fired when that wasn't the case? Why tell me the idea I shot down was Sam's when it wasn't? He admitted he lied about that. Why? She then shows DMs between her and Ethan. It starts out with Trisha saying, I didn't, but if I'm being honest, it is. Ethan responds by saying, Sam, for example, made the entire questions advice segment and spent a lot of time going through questions. Trisha responds, AB didn't do proper research. Ethan responds, and you were like, this is horrible, stupid idea. Trisha responds, he summarizes my videos wrong. You didn't ask me. I read the comments now. Ethan responds, try to find employees who are perfect all the time. It doesn't exist. Dinny responds to Trisha by saying, If it's true that Ethan agreed to hire a new producer for Frenemies after the fight happened, why did you decide to still quit the show? I understand you have every right to leave as you please, but it sounds like Ethan was willing to hire a new person once it was brought up. Trisha quote tweets her and says, It was hours later when he said I was rude to the crew and felt disrespected. I said I shouldn't continue in that case. No one deserves that in their work environment. So I told him I was done. He knew. Frenemies out of context responds, Ethan said he agreed with you on hiring more people, so what's the problem? Trisha responds, That he went and told the crew, Trisha wants you all fired, but you down to film tomorrow? Moving on to a different question, Psalm asks Trisha, Do you feel bad about the work Ela put in for merch, just for it to be thrown out? Referring to this clip in Ethan's video, and now I have hundreds of thousands of dollars tied up in merch that I'm probably not going to be able to fucking sell that my wife works super hard on, her staff works super hard on, and now it's like, tough luck, dude. Trisha responds to her by saying, I spoke to him yesterday and said I would still promote it and take zero dollars, but apparently the money invested is from Frenemies highlights, not Teddy Fresh or their personal accounts. So it's also my investment loss. Another question that Jenny asks Trisha is, I'm just confused on this part. When you said that was one of your favorite movies and you love that character you dressed as, 
life. Then on the show, you said multiple times you had no idea who you were dressed as. Seriously, just wondering. Referring to this clip from Ethan's video. She hates the Uncle Fester costume idea that we pick all the costumes. And like, here's her message about it when I pitched it to her, you know, originally. I sent her this picture. I said, costume idea? She says, laugh my ass off. Oh my God, oh my God. This is one of my all-time favorite movies. Can we? I love her. She loves it. It's one of her favorite movies. And then she hates it. She doesn't even know who the character is. And it's all my idea. And, you know, fuck me for even making her do this. It's like... I don't understand. What am I supposed to do? Trisha responds to Jenny by saying, The same way he forgot it was his idea. We text so much. But if you look at the screenshot, he's the one who says the costume idea? With the pic? Which he insisted on Monday's episode it was my idea. He forgot it was his the same way. Dat Doodle responds to Trisha by saying, Cosplaying was your idea. That's what he's saying. Damn. Trisha quote tweets her and says, I said it for Halloween. And every single outfit was brought up by them. I swear on my life. I have receipts to prove it. They'd see it on Reddit or the comments. Happy to pull up those those receipts. I was also happy to dress up and be a part of it, but not my ideas. I like cosplay. I was excited someone wanted to dress up with me. I got and all the costumes around and paid for. Like, I was stoked about it, but saying they were my ideas is another lie. Since he wants to show our private DMs too, I'm down. Here's all the costumes they suggested. I was happy to go along with them, and even got them made, but he said I picked all them. It's a lie. I'm the green, frenemies group is the white. She then shows all the proof that the costumes were suggested by people other than her. I don't really think it's necessary to read these out word for word, but if you want to see what they said, you can pause right now and read it yourself. Moving on to Trisha's final tweets about this situation, she says, And for the love of God, can we please take Gabby's name out of the title of the last fucking frenemies? Change it to Light Ally. Anything but that piece of shit rape apologist children harasser. That girl has zero relevancy to the show, or why people watch. Someone responds, You guys talked about her on the episode. Respectfully. What? Trisha responds, like no one is going to that episode for that. The main issue from Ethan to me in private DMs that night, and in his last video, is that the crew felt disrespected. It's the last thing I want people to feel from me, so I removed myself from the show. I never wanted them fired. I really respected them and wanted to add. I praised both Ian slash Sam in that episode. I've done that in the past. To take me not liking a segment, or suggesting we add people, and say to them, Trish wants you all fired, is manipulative. He lied to me and said it was Sam's idea, and Ian's upset with me when Dan said it wasn't. And that is finally everything Trisha has said on the subject so far. There were some tweets I left out that were mainly repetitive. Last night, Trisha unironically tweeted once a minute for two hours straight, so I did have to condense some things down. If you want to hear absolutely everything she said, you can go and watch her videos on the subject. But for now, I think I've covered pretty much every major point Trisha has against Ethan, and Ethan has against Trisha. If there's any more updates, to the story, which there probably will be, I will make a new video on it, so if you don't want to miss that, be sure to subscribe with notifications on. Thank you so much to my channel members for supporting the channel, in particular Scrubby who has donated $100 a month. But with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in another video.